Hello everyone and welcome back to Niche. And we are here with our story hero tribe, a tribe of warriors, well, or eventual warriors. These guys are a little bit more used to running than fighting, it seems. And uh, thankfully I don't see any Baryinas around them right now, but they've been struggling quite a lot with them. And particularly our, our tribe leader, Rume, has actually lost some, uh, some life to a Baryina attack. And so that, of course, is not a good thing, and it's not what we want to see. Now, I was going to go through and look at our creatures, but I don't think any of them have the big body. No, I don't see that at all, because uh, that could help us. So we might want to try and get that in there, because I believe it gives one defense, and it gives some strength. And of course, these guys are really not warriors yet. They've had to fight, but uh, if we're to survive in the Deadly Hills, I think we're going to need to get a little bit stronger. Now, we're going to have, I think we're going to have Remy try and nest again, but the other option might be to send some of these creatures ahead and see if we could clear a path, because somewhere up in these hills, right in this area, there is a healing fruit. Now, there's also a leech in the river, and that's not what we want to see, but if we start a new day here, hopefully nothing attacks. All right, I don't hear anything dangerous. So I think, let's have, I'm going to have Duke Duke Vaughn gather, but I think Nuku and uh, East Lies, kind of the, they're kind of, I guess they're, they're the protectors of, uh, they're the tribe protectors. Oh, hey, let's not let this leech attack. Uh, I feel like they might try and possibly slip their way across and, and maybe start inching around because if we have the chance, it might be worth trying to get, uh, trying to get Reime to that healing fruit, but for now, I think we need to ha have her have another baby, because we need to preserve those immunity genes if we can, and so I'll actually bring Duke Duke over, or er, Duke Duke over here. Now, we'll start using some of your names in the next one, I think, and in fact, let's actually have Duke Vaughn kind of go with them, and just kind of see, but uh, for, for now, we're not going to be doing that just yet, so Duke Duke Vaughn has taken a little damage as well. Uh, I think Nuku is the only one who hasn't, because he actually was able to use the healing fruit to heal himself. And so if, if he can lead them back to it, then we might... Okay, let's listen around, because there are Baryinas here, and we had East Race. Okay, so we've had two babies. If we're going to find a healing fruit, it has to be now, because she has one day left, and I don't even know if she'd be able to get to get there in time. In fact, I don't think she will, but I think these guys have decided that they kind of want to reclaim the healing fruit. But let's look at the babies. So we have B and A, B and C, B and D. What other gene? So B and C, B, D, B, A. So we don't really have the C gene. B and C and B and D. So we really need to keep a new Duke Duke's A gene in there. So we might be forced to risk him breeding with these lies. And so I think... I think Rime would possibly kind of kind of call her back over here because I don't think we're going to be able to have a... I, I think she would call them all back over here because I don't think we're going to... We'd have to find another nest if we want to have her be able to nest again. So let's kind of look around a little bit. We're going to listen very carefully because we don't want to risk having... Um, we don't want to risk having a Baryina pop out of the grass at us. But if these guys happen to be able to find another nest which it doesn't look like they're going to. Okay. Yep, I don't think they're going to. So, I think we're not going to have Rime is not going to be able to have she's not going to be able to have another another baby and so what I think what she might do is knowing that this is her last day, I think she would come down here and in order to help the tribe, she would actually gather these poison berries because she knows it's the end of her life anyway and she knows they're going to need some food. And I think she'd be willing to take that risk uh, as the tribe leader to, to defend the rest of her tribe and to help them continue on. And she has passed away, leaving behind quite a bit of the rest of the tribe. Now, I think... I think East Lies, I think she would come back, and I think she and Naduke Duke... I, I feel like she would take up the mantle of being the female alpha here. And we'll move, maybe we'll, we'll move Lakora over here and have her help us gather some of these, uh, these berries and then move these rays down here where she'll be safe. And then put these lies in the nest here and have her, 
maybe I think some of these guys might start gathering some of the prey around here and in fact I don't think either of them are strong enough to take down a stag mole though but I think Nuku would possibly make his way this way and see if oh we've got bunnies down here but I think they would also look for some of the coconuts perhaps oh we did get this bunny hopefully the scent of that meat won't attract another bear you know though because I think it has been known to in the past let's start a new day and good news, it has not attracted another Baryina. I think, oh, oh, there seems to be more berries over there too. Let's have um, Lakora gather here. And we'll have Duke Duke Vaughn kind of come over here. And maybe inch his way slightly closer to this coconut tree. In hopes of being able to gather from that as well. And then do we have, okay, we have the B and A gene. What does B and C we're getting a little bit closer, so I think these lies would dest now destroy this nest. And I think it will have to fall to Nuku or to Duke Duke Vaughn. Probably Nuku because he's a little younger to make sure the line goes on. But uh, that will that will be in the future. So for now, let's have Ease race. Uh, maybe come up here and gather some of these roots because that is an important, important thing to be able to do. And we'll have Naduke Duke step over here. And Lakora will kind of inch this way, I think. And these two will stay very close to little little baby Seiko in hopes of protecting her. Unfortunately, I think it's been too long since we've had a Baryina attack. And so I'm a little worried about that. Oh, what we do have is another of these birds. Oh my goodness. That is crazy. Okay, let's have Nuku gather here. I think... This tribe would kind of, um, they would see, they would see that, uh, this, the stump over there and sense that that is going to be a helpful place. And I think Lakora could stay here and help gather as well. But I think East Race and, uh, East Lice would start kind of coming this way and maybe making their way towards the others in hopes of setting up near this stump. And they would clear some of the grass, but we need to leave some of it just in case a bear Yuna shows up. <gasps> oh no, and I've spoken too soon. Thankfully, it is just a normal bear Yuna, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to take it down. So I think Duke Duke Vaughn needs to make sure he gathers. We may just have to try and hide. I think Duke Duke Vaughn and Nuku will be safe. So I don't see, ooh, there is a baby bear Yuna though. That could be the turn of the tide that we need. And I think Nuku is going to be... Oh, there's a rogue over there, too. Nuku is going to be our breeding male. And I think we'll mark them with blue. We'll, we'll mark the leaders with blue. Uh, to Kind of as a uh, memory of our original Roku, which, of course, our, our first leader here. And uh, he's still in our family tree, Rokirku, who sacrificed himself to protect the tribe. Um... He is, uh, or he was either a descendant or kind of a distant, like he, his tribe seems to carry on the, the memory of calling the leaders the Rokus, kind of, uh, because he was named, he seems to be named after Roku. So we have B-A, B-D, and we have C here. So East Race and Seiko need to just slip off into the bushes here and make their way away from the Baryina. So I don't think it should see them through here. How much eyesight does it have? It has five. And we have four camouflage and two camouflage. Uh-oh. Oh no, we might see it go after Seiko. But I think Lakora. Lakora has A. I think because Seiko has, um, Seiko has the A immunity as well. I think Lakora would take it upon herself to come and attack this Baryina, as would Ys Lys, who has D, which Ys Reyes has. And our former leader, Duke Duke, would probably pass on his role, I think, as well as Ys Lys, to these ones here, to Seiko and to Ys Reyes, and to Nuku, who can try and kill this bunny. Oh, but it ran away. And I think Naduke Duke would also stop and kind of place himself in between the young ones and the Baryina in hopes that it would attack him as opposed to them. We can clear away the grass around these berries as well. So, oh man, I don't know. Oh no, it did finish her off. Oh, I was hoping it wouldn't. Okay, well, I think these guys, it's only got, 
It's got seven days left, so someone might have to step in. Oh, and I saw someone go slipping by there. We might have to have someone step in and finish it off here. Yeah, because it's not quite down. Honestly, I think Duke Duke Vaughn would kind of dart up here and finish it off here and then leave these rays to come up and gather the food. And I think she would notice that perhaps this uh, this friendly Brayena is here in the grass and it's young and kind of go, well, maybe. I wonder what would happen if we tried to feed it as well, if we offered it protection here. I mean, obviously, its mother, and we're not going to leave her under the tree, <laughs> its mother wouldn't have accepted them. But perhaps this one will, and perhaps that could be the changing, the changing tide for this tribe. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. They've just been barely scraping by up until this point, but maybe this will be what changes things. Now... I don't hear any Baryinas, so I think we're safe for the day, and I think we'll have Nuku kind of continue to gather here, and then I feel like, I feel like Isreis is maybe more the acting leader, whereas Seiko is a little bit quieter, and I think Isreis would realize that it might be wise to, to get a little bit of, of a height advantage there, and I think she would have Seiko perhaps, um, well, perhaps let's move away from the bunny burrow, because hopefully then it'll be easier for the bunnies to spawn. But let's have, um, where did he go? He's under here. The birds are obscuring my vision. Let's have Duke Duke Vaughn come down here, and he can gather a little bit of this grass. We kind of have to claim an area for ourselves, and I think Naduke Duke would take it upon himself to go a little bit further out and possibly try and gather some more food. And Lakora might slip back to... Oh no, I didn't want to move his race off the stump. I clicked the wrong creature. Oh dear. Well, hopefully she'll, she can give birth on the next time. I mean, it wasn't like we were going to have her give birth this time anyway. But I feel like LaCora would take it upon herself to go gather from the, uh, the berry bush over there. And hopefully... Okay, there's the baby Baryina. Let's have you gather here. Duke Duke Vaughn can gather here. And I think East Race would come back and kind of kind of sit up here where she can have a good lookout. Now, there's no roots around here, and uh, I think these guys will have to stay very, very close. Although, I think they might clear some of the grass because we will need to find some more nesting material. But I feel like, uh, I feel like Naduke Duke would start making his way deeper into the grass here and kind of just venture out to see what he could find because he is getting a little bit older and uh, his time will probably come soon. So, let's see here. You can gather some of this. We don't want to clear too much grass. We still need to be able to hide if we have to. But, okay, good. The Baryina moved. Oh, no. Oh, I, please don't sit under the tree. That's not a good idea. Oh, my goodness. I hope he doesn't get himself in trouble. Oh, and it is. It's it's Duke, Duke Vaughn's last day here. Oh, my goodness. So, I think let's have him kind of venture up this way where he can see more of what's going on. There's no Baryinas within earshot or scent the or scent range, so I think we're okay. And let's have let's make sure Lacora can continue to gather here. She'll leave herself sheltered in the grass, just in case. In fact, let's sniff around and see. Oh, there is a root up here, and I think he might smell that and make his way towards it, and just kind of see. Um, she is already pregnant, and I think we'll have Seiko also breed. Oh, we need to hurry and... We, oh my goodness, okay, we need to hurry and find... Uh, oh man, we need we need to hurry and gather some more grass, please. Oh, let's not... Oh, good. Okay, I think we'll have East Race. We'll nest first and get, even gather a little more grass. But it'd be really good if we could find a permanent nest somewhere. Maybe Nuku would poke around just a little bit and gather some more grass just to see because we need to get, uh, we need to get a permanent nest if we can. And I think we'll leave this one kind of more sheltered. We do have uh, Islana who has D and C. That's good. D and C is actually really good, although, well, no, well, kind of. It's it's good. It is good. So let's have uh, East Race slip down here. Nuku only has three days left, so we definitely need to keep looking for a permanent nest. However, there is a dodo mango around here. And so possibly, first of all, let's have a uh, Duke Duke kind of follow this and dig up here. Oh, and something is fishing down here. I'm not sure what. Um, oh, please don't tell me. Oh, no, he's stuck. 
it. Oh, poor guy. Oh, you've got to get out from under that coconut tree, buddy. But I think, uh, I think Nuku, knowing that uh, East Race is protecting the baby, would kind of slip this way because there is a Dodomingo over here. And it might be worth looking to see if there's a permanent nest. Uh, you can also gather from here and you'll leave that, uh, that grass there so you can have it just in case you need a little bit more. Um, okay, oh, and our, our food isn't doing terribly. Let's have Seiko kind of slip down here. There is a nest. Okay, we'll have to watch very, very closely to see because if that Dodomingo leaves then we need to take that nest. Oh, yes! I feel like Seiko would kind of just shove her way in as quickly as possible, and uh, Nuku would feel a little bit better about, uh, about even though it is going to be his last day pretty soon here, I think he would feel a little bit better about having helped her. Are you still paralyzed? Oh, no! Well, at least it would make it easier for our females to be able to breed with him if need be. Who are you? Rayla! Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, is she out here to do some digging around, too? Is this a normal berry bush, or is this... It is a poison berry bush, and he does have two days left, and so I feel like he might kind of... I feel like he would kind of go this way. And see, there's so many poison berry bushes. If we could get the poison fangs or some other trait that would enable us to actually be able to dig, or not to dig, but to eat the poison berries, that would help. And I think... Naduke Duke, because it is his last day, would also gather the poison berries. That may be kind of our tradition in the tribe, to gather the poison berries on one's last day of life. I think Seiko would take a little bit of a swipe at this bunny and actually manage to kill it, too. But let's have her slip over here. Oh, this bunny is stealing from us, too. Oh, no. Let's have... Oh, Nuku needs to go breed, because it is his last day and he can't gather the poison berries, but he can sit here. Or actually, I'll move him back because then we can also breed East Race with him and make sure that she will be um, able to have another baby with him, even if he's not here to see it. Oh man, it's hard to believe we're losing so many of our creatures already. It still goes very fast, but oh no, wait, who's sick? Oh no, Kuvanta's sick. Oh, hopefully, what is he sick? He's got B, double B immunity. Hopefully she'll still be okay. I don't know, you guys. I think Kuvanta might end up having a, a little bit of a hard life, perhaps. Oh, what? What? Did he attack her? What happened? Oh, he killed the bunny. Oh! Oh, despite being stunned, he actually helped her. Oh my goodness. I think Kuvanta will have to step down here. I think we'll have Islana. Islana may have found a bit of a friend here. A, a quite large and pretty powerful friend, actually. Um, and I think we'll have these guys. Let's have you gather here. We've got six creatures, so we'll have you sit up here. And have your next baby, I think. But I did hear a Barina. I think it must have been up here, probably. So let's have Kudakir step up here. And let's actually see. So Kudakir has B and C. She has D and C. Islana has D and C. Let's have Lakora gather as well. And I think we'll have Kudakir step down here. And Seiko can sit in this nest and also dig and gather. That's actually a perfect place for her. And once again, our tribe has become quite small. And there's a bunny over there, too. All right, I... Oh! Oh, hello! Okay, this is not good. Um... Oh, man. And he has A and B, too. He would be the perfect mate for his Lana. Oh, my goodness. I feel like Kudakir would feel the need to jump in and defend his little brother and perhaps even Seiko herself. She is one of the leaders. Oh, and that's a rogue. That is a rogue. Oh, no. I, I think Kuvanta would kind of take a swipe at him. But I think Seiko would feel... What? Where the... Where was... That? It must have been a bunny. It must have been a bunny. I didn't see anything happen to any of our creatures, so I'm going to assume it was a bunny. Uh, I feel like... I don't know. So this nest is getting a little bit... Um, a little bit difficult. I think she would probably leave Kuvanta to defend the new baby. Or is the baby... 
The baby has bee immunity, so he should be okay. I feel like she would leave Kuvanta to defend the, the baby. And I think she would actually try and breed with this Baronina because she knows she needs to continue on with the tribe, especially since Seiko, our, basically our beta female, is so desperately trying to defend her son and possibly might not make it out because of that. So, I, I mean, if that Baryina, if that Baryina takes a swipe at, at Kirinu, I don't think he's gonna make it. So, I feel like Seiko would very much, or his race would very much feel the need to ensure, what is happening? Did somebody die down there? I don't know, actually know what's happening with this bird. I think Lakora would want to ensure that we can uh, gather more grass if need be, and I think Kuvanta would continue to go after this rogue male, because I don't think he has... He does have the E immunity gene, but he's sick, and he's got no pause, and I don't think we want to risk that now. He does have the spiky body as secondary, but I don't think that's something we want to risk right now, especially as we're trying to breed in the Baryina genes. So let's go ahead and start a new day. Oh! Oh, oh my goodness, okay. So, we have very good news and very, very bad news. So, Seiko took some damage, but she's not even bleeding, so that's great news. And we also have Kudakir, who is bleeding. And I think, because we have a killer Baryina, who actually has pretty poor eyesight... And a normal bear. <laughs> Everything bad is happening here. Oh my goodness. I I don't know. I think Vanta I think Vanta might kinda just I think Vanta would kinda just have to sit very still and hope for the best. I think Ku Vanta would probably attack and then might Oh no, don't please don't. <sighs> I think she would take a swipe at him just out of frustration. I think Kuvanta would kind of possibly slip into the grass here to try and di to distract this Baryina. And I think Islana would reluctantly bid her friend farewell because she realizes she can't stay here. And would kind of dart over here and slip into the shadows, hopefully evading the sight. I, I don't know if she'll evade the sight of this Baryina, but I think she'll at least be able to evade the killer Baryina. And I think Israce, despite despite her want to stay, would realize she really can't. She's going to have to go because it's up to her to continue on the tribe. And I think she would probably slip up here and make sure she licks um, Kudakir's wounds as he attacks the Baryina again. And I think Kirinu here would just kind of slip away in hopes that the Baryina won't see him. And in hopes that it'll attack, it'll turn on those who are fighting it directly rather than coming after him because he's still so vulnerable, but there's really nothing else he can do. Alright. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's our, our friendly Baryina. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. So we did lose our youngest member of the tribe, but... Okay. I'm going to gather these berries first before anything else happens. But our friendly Baryina has surged to the rescue, helping Kuvanta to fight off this Baryina. Now, I don't know. I don't think the killer Baryina, I don't think he's... I, I think he's still going to... I think he's still going to... I don't think this Baryina could stand up to him. But and look how scary he is. He's massive. But our Baryina has just come lunging to the rescue. He heard the cries of our tribe. And it's come surging forward to help. And might actually help us take down this Baryina. And I feel like Islana would quietly slip over here, lick Kuvanta's wounds, and then probably retreat over this way. I think Sika would continue her assault and lick um, Kudakir's wounds. And I think these guys would continue their attack. I think Kirinu would quickly leap over here and make sure we gather the food while Israce slips over here and actually invites this Baryina to join us, realizing what this Baryina has done to help us. And I think Islana would just probably run as far from the Baryina as she can get while Israce maybe gathers a little bit of grass over here. There's not much we can do to help Kuvanta, who I think he realizes he's sick and is going to struggle to survive anyway and I think he realizes he needs to give what he can for his tribe but maybe with this Baryina's help 
will be able to take down the the aggressive Baryena, not the killer Baryena. Oh, the killer Baryena actually, oh man, the killer Baryena actually took the food. So let's make sure we gather there. And another Baryena has emerged. Uh, not the friendly Baryena. The friendly Baryena is over here. And I think... I think Kuvanta, much as he would want to stay and help against the Killer Baryena, would realize he does need to escape with what little he has left. And would stop here to maybe crack that shell. Uh, Islana, remembering her friend's valor, I think would, would want to stand and fight for this tribe as well. And Israce is getting a little older, but I don't think she would hesitate to stand her ground. Uh, with that said, too, Kurnu, who, or Kurnu, who eventually I think is going to end up being mates with, um, with, uh, our, with Islana here, is probably, we'll mark them as the alphas, and I think Israce would keep her status for now as the formal leader until these two are a little older, but would be very much training them and ready to pass on the title. The Baryena still has six days left. But I think there's really not a lot we can do. So let's have Kirnu attack it. And then we'll have Kudakir come and attack as well. And we'll kind of just surround it. And hopefully it'll go after some of the creatures who aren't going to be breeding creatures like Brave Kirnu. And it did seem to attack them. There's so many of these birds too. Oh, did we gather over here last time? We did. Okay. And I think what we'll do is I, I feel like Kudakir would continue to attack. And we did defeat it. Good. And Seiko is bleeding, I think. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Well, we'll just make sure... What? I think that was probably a rabbit. Oh, and this guy's on a crabbit and can sh crack open this shell. And hopefully Kuvanta will be able to help us against this crabbit. I think what would probably happen here... So there are two of our friendly bear years. <gasps> oh my goodness! Our Baryena friend has come back. The 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 oldest adult one has come back, and I feel like Islana would want to go and greet him because he defended her. I think he realized that she and the others were in danger, and they they always they seem to have a, such a special friendship since he, she was always here gathering, and he was kind of in a sticky spot under the coconut tree. I, I feel like they very much have a strong friendship, and I think she probably would try to have some Baryena babies of her own as well before uh before he might end up passing away and before uh before anything worse could happen i think the killer bear unit is still out of sight so that's good and i think seiko might slip this way a little bit seiko is one of our alphas but it does seem like she will be passing away soon and i think while islana uses this nest is rays would kind of step over here to maybe watch over her sister who's very very injured and to kind of be with her as she does bid us farewell in another day we only have one more left but i think we do have to leave off this episode here because it is that time again so oh my goodness this tribe has been so amazing even already there's been so much bravery but so much danger we've got wait a minute is that a winged creature ah <gasps> that might give that might give seiko and uh that might give Seiko and his race a mission, or possibly Seiko and Kudakir, who's kind of been taking care of Seiko a little bit as, uh, as she is going to be passing away soon. That might give them something to go investigate, because if we could get wings, then it would mean we could finally attack these birds of prey that have been hovering in the sky. So, things might be about to change in this tribe, but... Uh, my goodness, we've already had so many heroes. We've had so much braver. We, we had a surprising hero in our Baryena friend here who stood up and attacked not just a normal Baryena, but who stood up to defend the tribe against a killer Baryena as well and then returned to us. So his friendship with er, with Islana, I almost said Seiko. Seiko's over here. But his friendship with Islana is really something amazing. And uh, perhaps they, along with his... Uh, his baby with his race will end up being the start of a tribe of defenders who could be strong enough to fight. And actually, before we go, one last thing I want to do. We do have the ability to put the claw in, and I think Islana would realize that. And I think Kirini would realize that if they're going to be able to survive on this island, they're going to have to fight for their lives. So they need to be ready to do that. 
Uh, but we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode here for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. But until then, this is Jay, over and out.